At the time of recording, there's about a week or so left before Preptober comes to an end. And as things are going, I'm unlikely to have as much planned for the story as I would like. But at the same time, I have enough planned to know what I'll be writing come November 1st. It was now time for some research. I needed to pull conflict and world building details from reality. I needed a deeper understanding of how kingdoms were run, and how a person might go about dethroning one. I had questions about the world I was creating and needed answers before I could move on. Now, I didn't need to know everything about everything in my world, but I needed to know as much as I could about how this kingdom was run since it was going to be the focus of the entire story. It's like art. You spend more time rendering things closest to the focal point of the image and less time rendering things far away or in shadow. In the initial setup of the kingdom, I had the king ruling by himself, with a small council of the specialists only loyal to him. After a bit more writing, I thought it would be better if more people were involved in the ruling of the kingdom. and if the king didn't have all of the power. This seemed more realistic, and would allow for a more interesting story that wasn't simply about good and evil. After doing some research, I discovered that most monarchies either ran through religious means and beliefs, or they had a large council of nobles to regulate the power of the king. I decided to combine these two and solidify the monarch using elements of the world I had already had in place. Here's what I have so far. The kingdom the story spends most of its time in is Talithia, an elven kingdom that consists of two primary races of elves that had unified years ago, in order to better protect themselves against invading forces. One race came from the forest, and the other from the mountains, but both had connections to magic. Their beliefs were different, but they all wanted peace. Their new culture began to form around the belief that they are stronger together, and that the more unified they are, the stronger they would become. This belief solidified more and more as they successfully defended off the invaders. Eventually, a family was formed that embodied the idea of unification, and they were chosen to lead their people into a new age of peace and advancement. It was the belief that this family was chosen by the spirits of the sky and the spirits of the earth to lead these now unified peoples creating the elves' first monarch. With each generation, the royal family's connection to magic grew stronger, and so did their kingdom, giving birth to modern Talithia. But over time, this idea of complete unification made it too easy to ignore the problems of the individual and the minorities. The current king was given the crown at a young age, and promised to lead his kingdom for the betterment of the people, relinquishing the complete power of the crown and forming a council that consisted of nobles, scholars, and landowners, each obtaining a seat by offering all they could to the kingdom and its people. Those within the council had a voice in how the kingdom is run, and will continue to have a voice as long as they can benefit the kingdom. They also have rights that allow them to freely govern their own lands and districts with little restrictions from the king. The young king felt that by spreading the power, they could address the needs of every citizen and grow stronger because of it. But unfortunately, at the same time the kingdom was hit by disease, drought, and civil war. With it came greed, fear, and many casualties. This is the current setup I have for my world, and with it comes new characters, new conflicts, and new experiences. 
Now, I didn't go over how the king became the villain, or how our main character fits into all of this, but that's because I'm going to save all that for later, when the book has actually been written. But if I had not done this research, and if I had not done this setup, it would have been difficult to place the characters into a blank canvas of a world and pull conflict out of it. The world shouldn't feel like it only ever existed when the characters are in it. I also didn't go into any details on the magic or the beliefs of the original elf tribes because one, this video would be too long if I went over everything, and two, a lot of it has no direct effect on the events within the story. In fact, I left out most of the history that I was able to craft for this world for the same reason. But one of the first things I did do was to create a magic system for the world. Much like creating the government and history of a world, knowing how the magic works will ensure that I can build conflict around it and have it all make sense, rather than magic just being a convenient trick to pull out in moments of need. Now that I have this world, the characters, and a basic outline for the story, I can go in deeper to define and redefine plot points, while adding in new ones to reflect the impact that the world development has on the story. Next. I think I'll make a map to better understand the locations of everything and to fuel even more potential conflict. It's easy to go from A to B when it's just a field of flowers, but what if it's a desert, a mountain, or an ancient forest? Of course I could make it up as I go without a map, but, but then I might turn around and see that the land makes no sense when I or someone else does decide to make a map. Not much time left in Preptober, and planning has gotten slower than expected. I had to cancel plans for other projects in order to catch up, but I can sh assure you that all I need to get done shall get done as it needs to be. In the upcoming videos, I will go into more detail on how I went about creating my world and story, focusing on specific topics like character creation and world building, but in the meantime, I hope this video was helpful to at least one of you out there. If not, let us know in the comments what could be done better. And if you know of other ways we can level up our writing skills, let us know that as well. Also, while you're down there, I would love it if you would subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can see what I do next. But until we meet again, I would just like to say, welcome to Edenwood.